in general uh, at this uh, uh, at this time point uh, ngs testing appears the most efficient way of identifying uh, genetic alterations that can be targeted for clinical benefit in patients with advanced non small cell lung cancer uh, and it is because that it allows us to simultaneously assess uh, multiple different uh, gene alterations and in general requires less amount of tumor tissue uh, as compared to some of the older methods uh, that uh, assessed uh, these genetic alterations uh, independently. Uh, another advantage with NGS testing is that it may be better at identifying translocations as, com com uh, as compared to some of the older methods such as IHC, IHC and FISH. When it comes specifically to RET translocations, right now we don't have uh, any IHC test for RET. Uh, FISH can be utilized to identify RET translocations, but one of the limitations of FISH is that we cannot identify the partner gene. And so NGS lands up being uh, probably the best test to identify RET translocations in non small cell lung cancer patients' tumor. What is important to note uh, is that uh, in, for fusions in general, uh, NGS testing that is done, uh, that is DNA-based, uh, may have some limitations in that DNA-based NGS assay may not identify all tumors with translocations, including red translocations. Uh, it is difficult to go into all the reasons uh, that uh, uh, are sort of the basis for this limitation of an DNA-based NGS assay. But suffice to say that it is important that a RNA-based NGS assay is performed if a translocation has not been identified in a DNA-based NGS assay. And this comprehensive uh, NGS assessment will allow us to detect all tumors with translocations, including red translocations. And so I think at this point, uh, if feasible, uh, it would be best to uh, do uh, NGS assay uh, in patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer. So NCCN guidelines highly encourages uh, that we use uh, NGS testing uh, to get a comprehensive analysis of all possible genetic alterations in the patient's uh, tumor. Um, it, uh, it uh, requires, uh, the guidelines suggest that at least EGFR, ALK, BRAF, and TRAC, and ROS1 should be assessed. Um, but uh, they do suggest that uh, other alterations such as HER2, CMET, RET uh, are also uh, analyzed since there are targeted therapy options uh, for these patients. Uh, and uh, in this context, the best way to assess these alterations may be NGS. Again, as I mentioned before, because of the ability to simultaneously assess multiple genes, uh, particularly in non-small cell lung cancer patients, where the amount of tumor material available for conducting these uh, tests uh, could be limited. And therefore, having a test that uses least amount of tumor tissue uh, is extremely beneficial, and that happens to be an uh, NGS test. We need to recognize uh, the limitations that may exist in each individual practice. Um, and what I would say is that um, if it is possible to do NGS tests and do so in a reasonably uh, quick time, then, uh, then it should be what should be done. But I think what the focus should be based on local uh, availability, uh, whatever resources are locally available, uh, that the uh, practicing oncologist uh, try and get uh, as many molecular alterations assessed as possible. So one of the major limitations in lung cancer patients is uh, the amount of tumor material available uh, for these uh, genetic uh, testing, uh, for genetic testing. Um, and uh, therefore, uh, and if one uh, sort of conducts uh, each of these uh, tests independently, that is, each of the uh, genetic alterations are, uh, or different tests are performed to identify the different genetic alterations, then uh, it is quite possible that one may have not, uh, may not have enough tumor tissue left to conduct all the necessary testing on the, on the tumor. 
and this may lead to the patient requiring a second biopsy. We now do have the option of performing, uh, of uh, doing uh, liquid biopsies or assessing circulating tumor DNA to identify these genetic alterations. But it's important to note that the sensitivity in general for of these liquid biopsies is only about 70%, suggesting that if a test, is, if the result is negative uh, with a liquid biopsy, does, that does not rule out, at least in 30% of the patients, uh, that the patient's tumor does have a genetic alteration. So a liquid biopsy may to some extent overcome the limitations of tissue biopsy, uh, but uh, it is very important that we have uh, tissue results, particularly in the event that liquid biopsy results are not available. And in that context, we use a test such as NGS uh, to uh, maximize uh, the tests that can be performed or the genes that can be analyzed in the tissue that is available.